Hello friends, today we're going to find out everything about the 70My Dishcam A510. Welcome to this new video. So before we start, I have to mention that 70 Mai sent me the dash cam in order to show it on my channel, but as always, I give you my honest opinion. So as usual, we're going to check out the boxing, check out all the product and specifics. We're going to compare it with the previous version that I have right over here. I will show the installation in the car. And of course, we will check out everything about the menu itself the camera footage and I will end with my conclusion. So first let's check out the box. You can see that it is a great compared to the previous one, which is the Cam Pro Plus Plus, but also known as the A500. This camera is the set with the rear camera, but the rear camera is exactly the same as I had on my A500. You can buy this camera just as a front cam. You can buy this camera as a set with the rear cam and you can also buy it with this new 4G hardware kit which I will show in a minute. So for links and prices, please check out my comments where I share some links. So for the prices, this camera comes about 120 euros, but please check my comments for the most recent link and to make some great deals. So now let's see what's in the box. It's the same principle as always. You get the stickers to install the camera on your car. So let's see what we have. We have one sticker. From, so there are two stickers for the rear cam. It's very really nice to have a, a spare one. The same for the front camera. Then we have the 3M tape to stick the holder on top of on the electrostatic sticker. And then we have the dash cam itself. Now compared to the previous one, you can see the colors are still the same with the gray lens. The button layout is the same. The a510 has this ventilation openings on the bottom and on the top so that should avoid overheating when we check the side we can see that there is a clear difference with the sd card slot of course for the micro sd but here we have the DC in so that you power in here on the top you can see that is this special asymmetrical USB or here it's a USB-C and then we have your rear camera in which is still the same type of connector so if you already have like me your rear camera installed you can reuse it but for the power cable you should use the new one as it is USB-C now then in the box as well we have the rear camera and then here of course we have the cables so you get this little handy tool you get the foot which is exactly the same as the previous as well It is cigarette lighter plug with your dash cam 
and an additional USB-A plug. And there is one cable, and that is this one, for the rear camera, which is long enough for normal vehicles, and then you have your charging cable. Now let's quickly check out the user manual. Installation is well explained. Memory card instruction. So for the differences between both cameras, I will show you the comparison view that I made. You can see that it is the new camera has this additional 16.9 ratio view, so which is panoramic for for widescreen. You also have additional 60 frames per second. There also is, and that's new HDR, so it is enhanced high definition colors. The Sensor, the image sensor is a Starvis 2 technology, where the older one only had the Starvis, the first generation of Starvis. Field of view are the same, display screen are the same. Then the image sensor is a better one as well. And then for the viewing mode, the A510 also has a picture in picture, so where you can see your rear view camera on top as a small image on your front image. So that's really nice, a nice cool feature. And then completely new is the 4G connectivity, which I will show later on in this video. Then also new is the time-lapse recording, which you also have on the rear, really nice. And the last difference is that your micro SD card slot now supports cards up to 256 gigabytes you can also have your story mode so where you can show some futuristic additions on top of your normal image to create your own odyssey as they like to say now when we come to the hardware kit this is a completely new kit the camera is compatible with the the older version but with this new 4G kit, you have instant alerts when something happens to your car. So for those who follow my channel, you may remember that I recently posted a video that somebody hit my car. I only discovered it, luckily, the day after. But imagine that you don't see it right away and the footage is already erased by new footage. So thanks to this new set, you will have instant alerts, but you will need a data sim in order to use this kit. So again, both hardware kits are compatible, but with this new kit that you can buy separately for 50 euros, you will have instant alerts. So here, let's see what's in the box as well. So here is a cable to connect between the dash pan and the 4G, the 4G model. Here is the 4G model itself with 3M tape so you can stick it somewhere on top of your dashboard. Reset button. There is a SIM card slot so you should have a data SIM that isn't protected with a pin code and it provides enough data to connect directly from your phone to your car. And here are the cables to connect it to your fuse box. So with the yellow accessory cable, your red power cable and the ground cable. Now I will do a separate video very soon on this hardware kit itself with all the functionality 
the installation and the in-app view I will post the little thumbnail in the end of the video as soon as this new video is available and if you subscribe to my channel right here and turn on the bell you will be notified as soon as video is online as well I already put a USB card into it see it's powering up so set the language so set the date and time of course I can do it in the application itself as well but just for now so this, these are the months and from the time So there's no parking surveillance cable for now. Download the application, of course already done so. Please format the memory card. I use the older memory card from the previous camera, so let's format it right now. And there you go. So let's check out the settings right now. The icons appears to be the same as in the previous. So entering the album, start an emergent video and out recording on or off. Let's go to the settings. So that's nice, we see here the new menu style with the horizontal layout where the older camera only had the settings and some simple configurations where here's everything is laid out like this. I prefer this layout. So let's start with the sound settings and turn off this horrible button sound. That's way better. So the on-off on tone can be turned off quite easily. Thanks 70 Mai for listening to our comments. I really don't like this tune when you go in the car and when you shut down the car, the doo 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 doo. And now you can simply toggle it on or off. Really nice. Thank you. Audio recording is on speaker volume let's say that it is low because the speaker is really loud and then that's all now let's see here we have the system setting wifi always on i will do so because i have my carplay as well and that intervenes with carplay screensaver there you can choose to um, put a clock in the dash cam, digital clock, after a minute or so I think, but you can also choose to have the screen off. So I prefer to have the screen off so it doesn't bother me while driving, out of when stopped, never. So that's when you have your hardwire kit, but as I'm not connecting with the hardwire kit right now, let's put it on five minutes after stop. Don't forget to change the setting once it is hardwired. And then the time, system language, date format. So let's put here the European version. Speed, let's see what we can, kilometers per hour, that's fine. Satellite positioning. Oh, really nice that you can check out how much satellites it sees. And that's all. So the video set the settings, video storage, let's check this out. High compression, that is fine. Resolution, 
so you can opt for the 4.3 or the new 1619 but as you can see for yourself in the 4.3 you have more image you can see you have more pixels and you can always crop it later on in your video editing tool now the video duration is set to one minute so that's really easy if you like to have short clips that are easy to watch and download but you can set it up to three minutes so let's keep it to one minute it's more easy to handle when downloading clips 70 my logo yes why not speed fine by me coordinates as well and refresh rate 60 hertz is perfect for europe Extended cam mirroring, no. Extended claim flipping. So this is if you want to have your, if you have your dash cam, uh, like the rear cam, positioned in a different way, you can correct the image in this menu. Okay. So we don't have parking surveillance yet. Smart travel. So here you have the emergency video record emergency video and the sensitivity set to medium i have some bumpy roads here in belgium so when you set it on high it will set off all the time and then your driver driver aids i don't want my driver aids but it has like lane assistance but i have it ready on my car and collision um, detection so that you approach a car too close that's in front of you, but I don't need that either. I have it already on my car itself. So that's the menu. Really nice to see that we have this audio on off option right now in the screensaver as well. So I'll install it on my screen so we can check out the image. What it should look like when I put the camera right over here. So the idea is to install it in a place where it isn't too much inside, but where you still have a great view. My last dash cam was installed a little bit more downwards. And on videos, you could clearly see this part. I will have to check if I will put it just on top of here. This way I can still clearly see this screen, use the buttons and the camera should film just beside of the dots another option could be here just behind the rear mirror but there it could be a little bit more tricky to see the screen if you don't move the mirror first another option could be on the other side but it won't be that easy to manipulate the dash cam when you're driving and another option could be down here but i think it's too prominent but most important, connect your dash cam first, see the image on your phone. This way you can see if the dash cam viewing angle is really great or not. So let's do so. So as you can see, I still have my old dash cam wire up here. I will use this one for right now. Here we have the little power socket. So on the dash cam, you can see I have two ports, the DC in, is for the charging port and the second one is for the rear cam let's remove the film so i can choose the language let's take english the indicator lights standby recording or error this button here is on off press and hold to turn off i'll pick the date later on in the application that would be easier so it says that the parking surveillance mode isn't available that is because i didn't hardwire the cam so download the app i already did so so let's Press this one. Please format SD card. The SD card is plugged in, so let's format.
formatting successful. And you can see it is recording directly. So now let's search for a good place. So here the windshield is a little bit angled. So I especially have the left side, but right here I'll get a better angle of the whole front. But let me check if I still can place the rear mirror as it should. Maybe it will be wiser to place it a little bit lower then. So I'll place it right over here. So the nice thing about this sticker is you have this dotted area. Placing it up here, I can use the dots to align them with the sticker. So it should be perfectly straight. Now the second step to install the camera itself. Remove the sticker fully. And that's what it looks like when using it. And this is what it looks like when you're driving and you have your rear view mirror just in front. I think I will reuse this foot and I will stick my old camera right here just for the comparison of this video. But as it is on this side of the windshield, it faces a little bit outwards as well. Then we have the new dash cam for which I reuse the older sockets. That's already hidden behind my rear view mirror. So for everyday use, that is perfect. And if you want to use the camera, you can just turn the rear view mirror away and you can use the application anyway. So here I don't have to set anything. I only had to plug in my hardwire kit on the new dash cam. I plugged in my rear view camera as well. So let's see if that changes something. Uh, really nice. You can see. Let me focus again. You can see the picture in picture of my rear view camera. That's really cool. The image with the red wall on that side, you can also decide if you want to flip the image or mirror the image if you think it is easier to read. I won't use it as a reverse camera, it's way too small. So I think this is perfect as it is more natural. It's like when you're looking over your shoulder. So for the angle of the camera, Like this, I just see the the dashboard. I won't need to see the dashboard, but I want to see the bonnet and the sky. That's the way it is right now. So really cool. Now we'll switch to screen recording mode, of course, to add this camera to the application. So I will check if my hotspot on the new camera is activated therefore I go to the system settings I go to Wi-Fi hotspot turn it on Wi-Fi settings on my telephone and I see my new camera appear so let's connect to it and use the password 678 As I won't turn the Wi-Fi hotspot on all the time, I don't change the password. But if you will activate your hotspot all the time, I will advise that you change your Wi-Fi password later on. Now we can go to the 17 My application. You can see that I have my Dashcam Pro Plus Plus that is not connected as the Wi-Fi hotspot is not on. And let's add a new device. It's already scanning my new device. It can use my localization when I use the application. And I have to confirm on the dash cam itself. And there you go. 
It connects to the hotspot. Connect again. So you can see that the dash cam is connected. I still can change the angle if I want to. As I'm filming in 4.3, I really have a lot of image with bonnet and sky. If you will change it to 16 to 9, you will have only a flatter image, so less sky and less bonnet, but the white was still the same, so there's no reason, and this is really great. In the application itself, I can toggle audio, I can take a picture and I can I, I can go to the library as you can see here. I can take a picture, you just heard the sound. I can toggle to the rear view camera. I can go to the album and to stop recording. This is my emergent video of the installation that I just did right now. Directly takes a picture of the back camera as well. You see the resolution is really great. And then my emergency video, one installation. So let's directly delete this one. And I can see all the videos. So that's of the installation. Now I can also go to timeline. That's a new feature. And that is really nice to figure out what happened when you had some special videos like emergency or parking surveillance. It's a really cool feature to easily check what happened and when. Now I just started the motor of the car, that's what you hear in the background, but remember if you are configuring your dash cam and you have the alimentation of your car continuously on, it can drain the battery. So last time that I did a video for you, at the end of the video my car battery was dead. So just keep in mind that you just start the car the time that you're configuring your dash cam. So you see the settings again that we already saw in the on the dash cam itself, but now in the application. The parking security is off, of course, as I don't have my hardware kit on right now. I have my speaker volume, low, ketone, all the, all the settings. So there you go. Now when we go to the home page, we see the camera itself and you can also see the add 4G that we'll do later on. That's to add the hardware wire kit.
in the meanwhile I had contact with 70 May to ask what are the what is this dismissed demisting option and the demisting enhances the video quality when it's cloudy or rainy now the manual itself isn't really clear but you can go online to the 70 May website you can go there through the application as well and there you have an online manual where it's way more complete it still isn't perfect but it should help you out way better than the manual that they provide with the dash cam itself it's recording you see the date and time you see that it has retrieved satellites there's an sd card for the album it records audio and the wifi is, is off these icons are for the buttons so switch to the camera on the back only front front with picture in picture and back with picture in picture so you can toggle between those modes i really like this picture in picture effect i can go to the system settings i can make an emergency video and i get, can go to the album connect to the hotspot and then go to the application so i'm connected with the wi-fi now we can go to the 70 my application just don't upgrade right now i will do that after this video i'm connected the dash cam just sounded to alert me that it is connected now the settings were already checked out yesterday but let's go to the album And we go to the videos and let's find some videos where I'm driving and here you can see the effects so you can see my speed you can see the g-forces the driving direction in the left at the corner right at on top you can see my altitude and the corner left you can see the date so I can speed it up a little bit let's try another video now you can download the video with these effects Somebody might just confirm to me. So I guess that you just have to press the download button when the RS effect is enabled. Now I don't have the driver aids activated, but if you activate the driver aids as well, you also see some effects in the middle of your image as the distance to the cars in front of you and the lane assist. Now let's, now let's go to the timeline here again you can activate the special effects if you want Now you can see that I can synchronize my synchronize my driving route data. I will do it automatically from now, so that every time when I connect to the dash cam, it will synchronize first, and I will synchronize right now. So now when I go to the home page, let's do it like this. I should be able to see my driving routes. And there you go, my last driving route. I was 
just parked outside of the hospital as you can see on the top and I drove home let's see some other driving routes as well so you can see my driving routes that I did earlier today I formatted the SD card this morning so there's not that much of information but it gives an ID so you can even play back your driving routes that is really cool now we'll update the dash cam and I will come back to you with a conclusion And updating is as easy as downloading the upgrade the update to your smartphone, pushing it to the dash cam, and it does it the job by itself. Just keep in mind that you keep your motor turning so the power get doesn't get disconnected. Now the overall conclusion is that this new A510 is really brilliant. I think it is a little bit better than the previous one the image quality is sharper i think that's due to the hdr and the improved image sensor of course if you already have the 500 it's up to you if you think it's needed to upgrade personally i don't think it would be that necessary but if you have a lower model like the a200 that i tested earlier on it should be definitely be worth to upgrade to this new model I love the new menu with the option that you have to shut down the on and off sound just within the menu. The new RS effects are really nice and cool to use. So yeah, my overall conclusion that it is a really good dash cam and value for money. And in my next video I will connect the hardwire kit of course and I will link that video in the end of this video as well. So check out the link in my comments if you want one for yourself. You can buy one with this link and help the channel. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think about it. And don't forget to share, like and subscribe. See you in the very next video. Bye bye.